Hi, welcome to a new IT Business Essentials tutorial. My name is Carlos, and today we will talk about Microsoft 365 for Business and how to configure it with your domain name. When you buy Microsoft 365 for Business, the first thing that you need to do is to connect it with your domain name. It will let you make use of Microsoft Exchange Power. Adding your domain name to Microsoft 365 could be a little bit intimidating. However, here I will show you how to do it step by step. You will see the process from purchasing the first license to creating the first user. Let's jump into our computer and I'll show you how it works. We are now in our computer, open the browser and visit Microsoft.com. The first tab that we're going to find in the top menu is Microsoft 365. So we click on there and we can see here the different Microsoft 365 licenses or subscriptions that Microsoft has. We will see Microsoft for Home, for Business, for Enterprise and for Education. In our case, we are going to center this presentation in Microsoft 365 for Business. With Microsoft 365 for Business, you can have from one user up to 300 users. Then we click on Microsoft 365 for Business. You will find Microsoft 365 Business Basic, Standard, Premium and Apps. Microsoft 365 for Business is a subscription. You will pay a monthly fee per user. What we are seeing here are the prices in Canada. Microsoft will identify the region where you are accessing from and then it will show you the prices in the local currency. With Microsoft 365 Business Basic, you can use the Office Suite online and you can also get Teams, you get the Exchange, which is the email service, OneDrive and SharePoint. With any of the Microsoft 365 for Business, you will get 50 gigabyte of storage for email and one terabyte for OneDrive and SharePoint. Microsoft 365 Business Standard include everything what is included in the Microsoft 365 Business Basic plus the ability to download the Office apps to your desktop. Microsoft 365 Business Premium will give you all what you get with the Microsoft Standard plus some additional security features. Our presentation today will be based on Microsoft 365 Business Basic. However, all the steps that we will do here will apply exactly for Business Standard and Business Premium. Let's click on Buy Now. So the first step is to enter a email address. Microsoft will try to identify if you are part of an organization that already have Microsoft 365, for example, a school. If, you're, if you work for a school and the school has Microsoft 365 already, it will tell you that you can have Microsoft 365 with your email address that is associated or connected to the school. So we click on Next. In this case, Microsoft already identified that our email address is not connected or associated with any organization that has Microsoft 365. So we click on Setup Account. Now we need to enter our information. So I enter my first name, last name, my phone number. The phone number will be required for verification purposes company name in our case I'm going to just use my name and I have to tell Microsoft what region or what country I am located so I'll click next so now we have to decide how we want to make the verification uh, we have two options you can send me a text message or I can receive a call in my case I prefer to receive a, a text message with the code so I click on send verification code we have received our verification code in our phone and I click on verify. It is now giving me the option to enter my domain name. If I have a domain name, uh, I just click here on this option. Use a domain name you already own. If you don't have a domain name, you have the option to purchase a domain name from Microsoft. Or you can bypass this option for now and click here and Microsoft will provide a domain name that will look something like this like the name of your business dot on Microsoft.com in our case we have a domain name already so we are going to select here and we enter our domain name 
Once we enter the domain name, we need to verify the ownership of the domain name. Our domain name is itbe.cloud and Microsoft is telling us that we need to add a TXT record to our DNS records. These are general instructions. We need to sign in to your domain registrar website, go to the DNS settings, create a new TXT record. Here is the value of the TXT record that we need to enter. We're going to access the domain manager where we have our domain name records and we will enter this value. Once we enter this value or this record for, a domain, for our domain name, we come back here and we click on I have added the TXT record. In general, there are two places where we can possible uh, edit or add the TXT record. It could be the place or the company where we register our domain name, or it could be our web hosting provider. You have to access Domain Manager or DNS Manager to add the TXT record. In our case, we have already opened our Domain Manager. Uh, we have opened a new tab here uh, where we will add the TXT record. This is how our Domain Manager looks like. Uh, this is uh, called cPanel. In this area, we will, we will see different lines every line with a different record. Microsoft will be able to verify that we are the owner of this domain name if we are able to add the TXT record. We click on here, add a record. We select the type of record that we are going to add. It's a TXT. We copy the value that we got from the Microsoft page. Once we enter the value that we copy from the Microsoft page, and we end copy or paste our domain name, we click on add record. Then our record has been added. If we scroll down to the bottom, we will see here the new TXT record that we just added. Now we are ready to complete the verification. We are going back to the Microsoft page. It is possible that we may need to wait a few minutes before the verifications can be completed. And we click here on we have added the TXT record. So we are now in the third step. We will need to create a user ID and password. This will be the first user which will have the admin access to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. If we are going to have, for example, only one user, that will be the user that will have that license. So we are going to create our user. In our case, it's going to be Carlos at itbe.cloud. And we are going to enter the password and confirm our password. In this case, we are not going to select these options. We don't want to receive any information in this account. This is going to be just for this presentation. Then we click on sign up. So it seems that our account has been created. And now we need to add the payment information. If we need to create additional users, we will need to increase this number as many users as we have. We will be able to add additional license and create additional users after we complete the setup. So we may click on add payment method. We will enter our credit card information. However, Microsoft won't charge our credit card until the end of the 30 days trial period. We have entered our payment information and we click on place order. We now see the order confirmation. We can see here also the email address that we have created under our domain name. This will be the actual Microsoft 365 username that we created. If we want to change something in our subscription, we click here. In our case, we are going to click on Get Started. So we have now accessed the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. It is now asking if we want to use our domain name, the one that we already verified, which is itbe.cloud, or we can add additional domain names. In our case, we want to just continue working with this domain name. This is the domain name that we want to work with. But something important is we can add as many domain names as we wish or as we need. With additional domain names, we will be able to uh, create aliases. We will be able to create groups different users with different domain names. 
we are not going to add any additional domain name at this moment. So we click on use this domain. We will need to add additional records to connect Microsoft 365 to our domain name. So we need to click on continue. We will now need to add additional records to our DNSs. And here we'll find information of the records that we'll need to, to add. If we click here on these little arrows, we will see that we need to add a MX record. The MX record is what will activate our email service. Then we have to add this C name. This will help our devices to auto configure the email address. And this record is a new TXT record that will help other providers to identify our emails. So we we'll click here to copy the MX record. We need to be aware that we need to add priori priority zero. So we go to our domain manager. So we click on add record. We select the type of record that we want to add is an MX record. We know that the priority is going to be zero. We paste the value that we bring from Microsoft, the Microsoft page. And here we enter our domain name. That should be okay. We click on add record. Our record has been added. So we can see here that our MX record has been added. It is a good idea to verify if there are any other MX record that might be in conflict with this one. We can see here other MX records. We can see here this one with priority 1, priority 5, 5, 10, and 10. This one, the one that has value 0, which is lower than 1, 5, and 10, will be the one that is working at this moment. If I set this MX record with value 15, for example, or 20, then the one that is going to work is this one with priority one. What it means is that our email service with Microsoft 365 will start working from now on because this is the one that has the lowest, the, the highest priority. Highest priority means the lowest number. So we are going to add the other records. Let's go back to the Microsoft page. We will click here. The C name is going to be this value. We we'll go back to our page here. Click on Add. Select C name. Under name, we need to go back to the Microsoft page. We copy this one here under name. It is auto discover. We go back to our domain manager. We click here. We paste here auto discover. This record will be ready. We can click on Add. If we scroll down, we will find the C name already added. We need one more record, which is a TXT record. We will go back to the Microsoft page. We copy the TXT record here. The name will be the domain name. We will go back to their domain names to our domain manager. We click on add record. We select the TXT record. We paste the value. And here we place here we put our domain name. We copy the domain name here. Then we click on add record. And the TXT record should be added at the end. Let's scroll down. And here we have it. So now our Microsoft 365 is completely activated. The email service is now working. Let's see if Microsoft already recognized the values that we have added. So we need to click on continue. Now Microsoft has confirmed that the setup is now complete. We can click on done. At this moment, our Microsoft 365 account is ready to work including the email service. If we want to add additional users, since we are within our Microsoft 365 Admin Center, we will be able to do it from here. We can click on these little three dashes and it will, it will expand our menu. Then we can click here on Users, Active Users. And we can see here the only user that we created, which is carlos at itb.cloud. We can add additional users by clicking here. However, we will need to purchase the additional license before we can actually assign the license to the new users. If we, if we want to purchase additional licenses, we click on billing, then click on your products. We will see here that we have only one license. We click here on the three dots and click here on buy licenses. Once we purchase the license, we can go back to users, create users, and assign the license that we purchased. We can buy additional licenses, Microsoft 365 Basic, 
standard, premium apps. And we can also purchase or buy other type of licenses, like, for example, Microsoft Project, Visio, Power BI, Only Exchange, or Dynamic 365, OneDrive for Business, and many others. To do that, within our Microsoft 365 Admin Center, we need to click on Purchase Services. And here we will find all the type of licenses that we can purchase. You can see here Microsoft 365, my Office 365, Business Apps, Collaboration and Communication, Dynamic 365, Security, Power BI. We just need to select the license that we want and proceed with the payment. Then we can create new users and assign their licenses. At this point, our Microsoft 365 account setup is complete. In other words, we created our first user and he can now access his Microsoft 365 account and make use of all apps, tools, and services that are included with the assigned license. Now, how can the user access his Microsoft 365 account and start using it? When we create or enroll a new user within Microsoft 365, we generate his password as well. The next step should be giving him his login information. His login information should be the username, which is the email address, and the password. And of course, a URL where he or she can log in. Let's see how a user can access his account. We will use our first user, the one that we created during this stop, which is carlos at itb.cloud. To access the account as a user, I'm going to open an incognito window within this same browser. Clicking here on the right, new, new private window. And we are going to use login.microsoftonline.com. There are other URLs that users can use to log in into their Microsoft 365 account, but this is one of the URLs that you can use. We enter the username, which is in this case carlos at itbe.cloud. Click on next and we enter the password and click on sign in. By default, Microsoft 365 has enabled the security features. In this case, the user will need to complete the information in order to, to use multi-factor authentication or two-step verification. I'm going to skip this process by now. I'm going to, the user will have 14 days to complete this step and start using the two-step verification. We're going to click on skip and then click here. You can use either yes or no, depending on if this is a computer where you usually log in. And we have now accessed our Microsoft 365 account as, as a user, as a general information. On the left, we will see the different apps that the user can use. These are the most popular apps like a Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, Notes, SharePoint in Microsoft Teams. Because this user is the admin, is the first user that we created he also will find this icon here which will give him access to the microsoft 365 admin center if this user had the microsoft 365 standard license the user will be able to click here and download the office apps and install it in his desktop if you want to access additional apps you click on the upper left corner and click on all apps and you will find all the apps available with this license. With this, we are getting to the end of our video today about Microsoft 365 and its configuration. I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any comment or question, just leave it below. If you want to see more videos like this one in the future, or if you want to find this video easily, please hit that subscribe button here below. Thank you and I hope to see you next time.